Hi and welcome to Code Tutorials. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the countdown block, which is part of our key blocks for Gutenberg plugin. Right now, we're on a page that has several countdown blocks added to it, and we can see the different ways you can use and style this element. The countdown block has numerous options, which make it very simple to set a background color for it, adjust its size, font, spacing, and more. Additionally, all the blocks in the key blocks collection can be mixed and matched, so it's never been easier to create stunning page sections. With all that said, let's take a look through what options the countdown block offers and what you need to know to use it. For starters, you're going to need a page to work in. I prepared this one. Now, to start adding blocks, I can click on this plus symbol to open the block selection. This is where you'll find all the blocks you have installed on your site. So we can see both Gutenberg's native blocks and, if we scroll further down, the key blocks. You can easily recognize them as all the icons are reddish pink. The top section contains premium blocks and the bottom section has free ones. You can browse through the blocks here to find the one you want and drag it to the page, or you can go here. Click on the plus sign button and then search for the block you need. Here's the countdown. Simply click on it to select. And here it is. By default, there's a date already set, so the block starts counting down right away. Now, to change this, or to change anything about the block, click on Block. And then we have the Content tab, where we can customize the block. I'll start by changing the date and time. Firstly, we have the field where we set the date. I'll put the 18th, then the month will be January, and the year 2031. Finally, the time will be 12 on the dot. There we are. The counter has automatically reset. Also, if you don't want to type, you can pick the date from this calendar here. The next option is for setting the format. With the default Show All, we have all the units of measure from months all the way down to seconds. If you prefer, you can pick Hide the Seconds, and then the counter will stop showing them. We can also choose to hide the minutes and seconds, which looks like this. Or we can go the opposite way and hide the months. Then we get this. The amount of time is recalculated within days. And since my page is not as wide as it would actually be on a live site because of the options I need to keep accessible, the number of days has fallen across two lines. But this will look normal on the front end, or if you're worried, you could use the item width option within the style tab to adjust this. All that said, the design I plan on making involves me showing everything. Okay, there. Next, in the options, we have the labels section. When we open it, we get options for customizing the labels, this text under the countdown numbers. We have one set of fields for labels when they are in the singular, so when any of the units in the countdown reaches 1, the appropriate singular label will be shown. And we have another set of fields for the plural version of the labels. This is the version we can see on the left right now. Let me show you. I'll change the label for months and make it say month, singular. And we can see that the label has changed immediately. And whatever you enter will show up here. This is essentially a plain text field, so it's easy to translate or adapt as needed. You can also leave this as is and you'll get these default labels we see on the left. This brings us to the last section, the advanced. It contains the additional CSS classes option. This is where you can create a specific class for this element and then you can use that class and refer to your element when creating CSS that would style it. Okay, after that we have the style tab. The first option here is Justify Content. This is essentially a CSS property that determines how the browser will distribute space between and around content items. The default setting is Space Between, so all the space is distributed between the items, and there's none to the sides of the countdown. Other than that, there's space around, so there's an equal amount of space around each unit. Then we have Space Evenly. With that one, all the space is divided evenly within the countdown block. And finally, we have a center, which pushes all the units to the center by setting most of the space to each side. So, you can pick which of these you like the most. I'll be sticking with space between. 
there. After this, we have the alignment option. By default, it's set to the center, but you can replace it with left, which looks like this, and right, which looks like this. But I'll stick with the center. Alright. Then we have digit color. With it, we can easily change the color of the numbers. And we have the option of clicking here to open a field where we can enter a hex code for a specific color. That's what I'll do now. There we go. Below that, we have the digit typography. This is a collection of options that allow us to set things like the font family for the numbers. I know the font I want, so I'll search for it. There, okay. Then we have the font size option. I'm going to set 70 pixels for this. Alright. After that, we have the font weight. For this, I'll set medium 500. This will make the numbers a bit bolder. Other than that, we have the transform option, which actually won't do much good with numbers, but it is part of the typography options that you might find useful when styling some text content. Then there's the style option, where we can make the numbers, for example, italic if we want to. Then the decoration option lets us add a line under, over, or through the numbers. And at the bottom, we have the line height and letter spacing options. And that's it for the digit typography. Next, we have the label color, so we can change the color of the label text. I'm going to set the same hex code that I used for the digit color. There we go. And underneath, we have another set of typography settings, this time for the label. Since we already know the options, I'll just change what I need. I'll match the font to the one I used on the numbers. Okay, then the font size can stay the same. As for the majority of the options here, I plan on leaving them set to their default values, except for the weight. I'll set that to medium 500, and that's it. With that, the label is mostly finished. There's only one option left, the label margin top. By adjusting it, we create this gap between the text and numbers. And for this, I'll set 14 pixels, and then get this gap we see. Alright, next section. Item style looks at the units in the countdown as a group of items. You'll see what I mean when I start adjusting the background type. Right now, it's set to classic, and we have a few more possibilities. But sticking with classic, we can pick a background color. For example, this. Each unit or item gets a background. I have a specific color in mind, so I'll type in the hex code for it. Alright, there it is. Other than the color, we can set an image as the background. That's also a possibility with a classic background type. Then we have the item width option. It's used to change how wide the item and its background will be. For this, I'm going to switch the percentages. This will make the block adapt easier to smaller screens. And then I will set 16.5 as the value. We also have the item height option. It's for adjusting the height of the countdown items and their background. I'll set 190 pixels for this. Okay. And finally, we have the item margin. If I put, say, 50 pixels at the top, like so, then everything gets pushed down. In this way, you can adjust each side separately. But you can also click here to connect the fields, and then you'll enter a singular value that will apply to everything. If I put 70 pixels, for example, then we have all this additional space, as the items have 70 pixels all around them. And these two dropped into the next line because there was no room for them to fit above it. Okay, I'll clear this. There we go. Now let's go back up to the other background types that we can set. Other than classic, there's gradient, where you can set the first color, like so, and set the second color, say this. Then pick your gradient type. It can be linear or radial. With that, you can... Actually, I need to set the location first. So you can play around with these two options to adjust how much coverage each of the colors will get. Please note, the first location option needs to have a smaller value than the second one for the gradient to display properly. Then you can move on to adjusting the angle to change the resulting look. And if you prefer, you can switch the gradient type while keeping most of these settings. I'll set radial. Our colors are there, the coverage ratio set by the location options is there, 
and you can fine tune this to better suit the new look. This is all down to your preference. And another thing you can do here is change the position. We have the default center center, but there's also center right and bottom right and so on, you get the idea. So those are some of the possibilities you get with the gradient background type. And that's it. I can go back to the setting I want to use, which is classic. I did set a specific color for it. And that actually wraps up the style tab options. Now there's one tab left, advanced. This is something you get with every one of the key blocks for Gutenberg. And the options here serve to set how an individual block will look and act on the page. While these options are undoubtedly useful as they can help you adjust the block positioning, background, border and more, they affect blocks as a whole. They aren't specific to this particular block, so we won't be covering them in this tutorial. However, I will use the padding option here to adjust the countdown display on the page. You can connect the fields to enter singular value or you can keep them disconnected. I'll switch to percentages for this and set 2.6% for the right side and the same for the left. Whoops, missed the field. 26 for the left side. And what this has done is given me a bit of breathing room between the page sides and the content. And with that, my block is done. I'll hit update to save my work as I've completed the design I had in mind. And that design is just one of many you can opt for. For more ideas, you can go back to the page we started from. Here you'll find different looks and styles you can apply to your own countdown blocks. Of course, now that you've gotten to know the block options, you can just as easily create a completely distinct and unique look for your countdown element. Ultimately, whatever you decide to do, we hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions after watching this video, or comments or suggestions you'd like to make, please drop us a line in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new tutorials and theme guides. Thank you for watching!